Director of the Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center at the Council General of India in Durban, Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Yogi, Mr. Mark Loon, Mr. Salma Patel, Mr. Sipire Mchuru, Mr. Piyush Khandelwal, distinguished guests and online viewers. Namaskar and welcome to episode 9 of Bharat Ek Anabhuti, India A Feeling, an online travelogue series. Today in our midst, we have two very dynamic and interesting guest speakers, and that is Mr. Mark Loon and Ms. Salma Patel. To commence today's program, I'd like to invite our first guest speaker to share his remarks on Incredible India, and that is Mr. Mark Loon, who is founder and head teacher of Kairos School in Johannesburg. Uh, Mark G has experience in teaching children of all ages from the age of two until adulthood and has two master's degrees. We welcome today on episode nine for his remarks, Mr. Mark Loon. Hello, Dr. Yogi. So I had a, a most uh, significant visit to India. I had already been studying um, yoga philosophy and Hinduism through my uh, connection to my yoga school and ashram in Johannesburg. And through that connection, I had, I had longed to visit India for a few years and after I completed my master's, I was I had the opportunity to be free for a year, and I took the opportunity to spend six or six and a half months in India, uh, mostly in uh, Uttar Pradesh and and also Rajasthan for for those months, and I had a, a very significant life. Uh, it, it, in a sense, it influenced my life quite significantly. Um, I, I I went as a tourist, but I knew I didn't want to just be a backpacker. I was 26 years old and I had finished my master's knowing it was a master's in engineering and I definitely didn't want to spend my life doing engineering. And I was in in a dilemma because I really, as a 26 year old, I didn't know what to do with my life. And I had a connection in my university in Cape Town of a person who lives in Delhi. And when I arrived in India, I phoned Mr. Bissell up and I said, apparently you might be able to give me some meaningful work to do while I'm here instead of just being a tourist. And William Bissell said, well, we he was, he's one of the founding members of Fab India. And he says, well, we've got a school. Have you ever taught before? And I, I hadn't properly taught before. I hadn't, I had taught some a matriculants, a little bit of extra maths and a bit of chess, but I hadn't really taught. And he says, well, if you can help us, we need a teacher. And it's, there's a school in a little village called Bali which is near the town. You, no, I think no one in India probably even knows Bali, but you might have heard of Falna, which is a small town in Rajasthan, uh, halfway between Udaipur and Jodhpur, uh, just very close to the Ranapur temple. And I said, wonderful, I'm happy to go and teach. Um, I'll, he says I'm, I would be employed as an English teacher um, he needed to interview me, so I was able to just visit Fab India in Delhi uh, for a brief interview. And then I ended up going to Falna and had a most a, a incredible experience with the most amazing children and colleagues in this. It was an English medium plus Hindi speaking school. Um, and the principal has had been schooled himself in the Krishnamurti school somewhere in Tamil Nadu. I'm, I'm not sure exactly which school he was part of in the Krishnamurti tradition. Um, and he was the principal, Vishnu Kant. He's now running an NGO in India. I should have got his, his company's name for this interview. I might be able to find it just now. And he welcomed me and I stayed in his house with his wife and two-year-old child 
who is now a, an adult. And I was, I just discovered I was free and taught. Um, I was um, able to be extremely creative because it, I was a volunteer. And I ended up not simply teaching English, but also taught drama. We put on the play Rudyard Kipling's Jungle Book, and we taught Tai Chi and uh, computer programming and all kind of things, the science, we'd studied puzzles and maths and all kind of things that we ended up creating together. And I, there was a moment in that journey, I, I was only there for two months in that school. Um, I kind of regret spending such a little time. I think I was young and should have stayed, stayed longer. Um, I remember teaching grammar pronouns in English and these, I think it was nine year olds were, were really, really interested in learning the pronouns. I think there's something specific about Indian children and maybe, maybe it's a uh, rural Indian, it was Rajasthani uh, children, I'm not sure, but they were so motivated, so eager. And I loved the moment, this moment of feeling like I was a choreographer in a performance and I was part of the stage, but also part of the um, audience, the audience and the actors. And there was this magic going on with between us the, as we were learning pronouns that I had this epiphany in my mind that very moment that I, I was going to be a teacher during for my life. And and so this two months helped me decide my career. I was I decided to be a teacher. Um, I was going to give up engineering much to my father's um, uh, um, judgments and concerns and fears for my future, but I was going to um, be teaching and do something in education for my life. And we um, enjoyed the rest of those two months together very wonderfully. And then I went on just to give you a, a picture of my the rest of my experience in in India. I also um, volunteered on an organic farm just outside Almora in Uttar Pradesh in a very beautiful forest. Um, it was the first time in many months that I hadn't heard traffic noise in India. Um, we were so much in the forest that near the, the far, the, that was a little guest house. Um, it was suddenly silent. I'd spent so many months listening to the, the noisy Indian traffic and suddenly there was this blissful quiet and I spent every day volunteering on the, on the vegetarian organic farm. A tiny, tiny little farm, but I, I got experience of that. And then I also spent four weeks in Rishikesh in the, in the Divine Life Society um, because of my connection to the ashram in Johannesburg. And our Swamis, uh, we, Swami Ishwara Mayananda and Swami Karunananda Ji Mataji in Joburg, I had learned already about the Divine Life Society. And I found, I, I went to Rishikesh and we, I, I made sure that I was in Rishikesh during the time that Swami Chidananda Saraswati was going to uh, be there. He was, he was quite old already and he, he wasn't uh, full time in Rishikesh, but I kept on coming in and out of Rishikesh, making sure he was there. And then finally, I was able to spend the time in the ashram while he was there for about two weeks. And I was in Rishikesh for about four weeks. And that was also a very influential uh, meeting of experiencing the darshan of of meeting him face to face uh, amidst um, a thousand disciples in the in the ashram. Um, I, 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 that's a broad sweep of my visit. I also have been separately on a second trip to to Tamil Nadu, and I suppose the story there is quite a fun one. I had just read Papa Ramdas's bio, one of his biography autobiographies. He's got Papa Ramdas has got two autobiographies. I think it's the first one, and he he had the um, passion of suddenly just wandering and letting God take him where he wants, where God wants to take him. And I decided I was going to travel in that same way. I wanted to avoid going the normal tourist route. 
And so I got to Mumbai airport. I got to the train station and I, I knew I wanted one of the destinations was Tiruvannamalai uh, Ramana Ashram. And I knew, so that was southeast, I think, of Mumbai. And I took a train. The, the first train that was traveling in the in southeasterly direction, I jumped on and I, I took that train. And then while I was in the train, I talked to the people in the train and I, I asked them, where do you think I should go? And the first place they told me to go, I would I went there and and I traveled a little bit uh, on in that way in the Paparandas tradition and finally ended up uh, over about two weeks to get to Tiruvannamalai and also managed to get to the Sri Aurobindo ashram there and um, the Krishnamurti center in Chennai. I think that's a, and then and then a similar tr tradition. I, oh, and I also got to Anand Ashram, the ashram in North Kerala, um, where Papa Ramdas uh, lived. And I got into a bit of trouble because I I didn't have a guidebook. I was just trusting God to take me, to guide me. And I very very close, almost uh, um, missed my flight because I totally misunderstood the times that the trains were arriving in the. Uh, in Mumbai airport. Anyway, that's a spread of my my experience in India. I'm I'm wondering if if it was clear or maybe Shristiji Didi, if you've got some thoughts or questions. Thank you so much, Mr. Mark Lewin, for sharing that experience with us. It was very interesting indeed and intriguing. Uh, where India inspired you to change your uh, direction of career. So thank you so much for sharing that um, insight and those feelings with us today on episode 9 of Bharat Ek Anabhuti. Pleasure. I'm, I'm hoping it was uh, vaguely interesting. We will be next screening a video on Incredible India. Where the carving deep into the bowels of the earth Or piercing the heavens with lofty towers Or weaving into space majestically planned cities Through the ornate traces of a sophisticated culture Of which even the ruins are so grandiose To the sculptural narratives etched in stone that can still be heard in the silence of hallowed halls of the times when stone and brick defied sword and spear to the times when the five points in the poetry of space and concrete won the hearts of many from the pristine waterways and mangrove forests untouched by the hand of man to the evergreen hotspot of biological diversity and intimism, to the mighty peaks of the snow-clad abode of the gods, our ageless heritage was, is, and will always be the Kohinoor in the crown of the world. Our next guest speaker is Salma Patel, the executive producer of Newsbreak Radio, current affairs on Lotus FM and SABC in Durban. Salma Ji has experience which includes reporting, bulletin compilation, presentation, television journalism, and many other feathers in her cap. When she is not chasing deadlines, Salma Ji enjoys reading a good book and revels in quality family time. Today, we welcome on episode nine of Bharat Ekanabhuti, Ms. Salma Patel, for her remarks on Incredible India. Namaste and welcome, Salma Ji. Namaste. Thank you so much for this opportunity. <clears throat> I was part of the um, editor's uh, 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 familiarization program in uh, 2019. We had visited India and it was 11 journalists and editors that went to India. 
And it was um, when President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, as the head of state in South Africa, the Republic, was invited as a guest to the uh, Republic Day celebrations in January in India. And um, we were invited as part of the Ministry of External Affairs, External Publicity and Public uh, Diplomacy Division as part of the Government of India. One of the exciting features for me or the highlights was actually the hospitality of the Indian people. Um, I was really taken aback um, and, and it left me with a feeling uh, of great um, love, I would say. <laughs> very, very simply, it was just love. And the beauty of it was when we were welcomed into Bengaluru, um, which was uh, the uh, IT capital of India, the electronics capital of India, um, we stayed at the Taj Hotel. And I must say that it was the first time I've ever eaten on a banana leaf. And <laughs> it was so beautiful. It was something that, you know, you hear of and you see in, in Bollywood movies and things, but you don't exactly experience it. And that experience for me was brilliant because when I got up in the morning, I, I went down to breakfast uh, area. And um, when I joined, the chef looked at me and he said, you're not from India. I said, no, I'm not from India. And he immediately took a banana leaf. He made fresh idli and um, he put all these little spices and everything all around it and he presented it to me. And that to me began my journey and my love for India. Um, everywhere we went, we had to try the food, we had to eat something, we had to experience the people, the hospitality was just brilliant. So we were part of this particular program here. I'm just gonna hold this up so you can see it, this particular program. and. Um, we had visited a lot of places uh, within India. One of the places that actually touched my heart was Wipro because we experienced the technol technolo technological advances of India and um, how they managed to streamline and also bring in women into the uh, techno technological field. That to me actually got me thinking that you know there are many, many opportunities for young Indians and that is why they are so good uh, at study and they are so brilliant uh, uh, moving around the world, actually on the cusp of uh, technological advancement. So if you need anything from India or if you need anything in technology, India is the place to go. And that's what touched my heart. Um, another uh, exciting development or uh, exciting place to visit was the... Um, was NASCOM, the National Association of Software and Services Company, that about the brilliance of the Indian mind. And we actually saw the first um, um, rocket that was actually launched in India. And I remember it was a picture of a, a, a man on a bicycle. And that was how they had transported the rockets at that time. So nothing stopped um, development, nothing stopped technology. One of my colleagues who was with us, Mr. Fakir Hassan, had actually written a book called, um, I'm just gonna hold it up there, it's called India in January. Um, and we visited with him. One of the um, um, things that he always talks about is when we went to Lal Bagh, which was the Rose Garden. And we were the only journalists and editors who were privileged enough to, you know, walk among the roses where normally people don't actually visit. So I'm actually going to show you this picture. It was actually very, very exciting because we got to see um, all the roses and we got to see some exciting things. And, uh, you know, people were exceptionally welcoming. They uh, they brought us in, they, um, uh, you know, accepted us. And it was just a feeling of, you know, a, let's just say it was a feeling of home you felt comfortable, you felt homely, and you felt wanted. The um, other historic site that we visited was the um, Maharaja's Palace. And uh, here we managed to see a lot of uh, elephants uh, that were um, um, hunted in those days, and they were actually mounted on the wall. Some of my colleagues did get a bit, uh, you know, get a bit 
give me the bit because so they, they actually made stools out of the elephant's uh, legs. But that entire castle was actually being um, 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 upgraded. And we did manage to see a lot of things there and, and learn about the uh, people from that uh, era. We also visited um, 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 uh, the ashram for Sai Baba. We went there. And one of the things that struck me was the cleanliness. Yes, it was bustling. There was a lot of uh, cars around. They, everything was, you know, very close, in close con confines. But it was cleanliness that actually got me. And the pride that people take. They might not have too much, but they actually are very clean and they're welcoming and they, they, they show you love and affection as well. Um, I'm going to take you through some of the things that we did uh, visit here. Um, uh, for me, it was the shopping. <laughs> Can you see that? We did a lot of shopping and we did a lot of visiting as well. Um, prices were brilliant. We went with, uh, oh, actually the group that I went with was a group of editors that had already been to India. And uh, they actually taught me how to shop. And as we were taking the trains, the one thing struck me, um, a lot of people who travel to India used to tell me horror stories about how women are abused, um, you know, uh, unwanted uh, sexual contact that they, they uh, endure in India. But I was actually quite surprised. The railway system had special carriages only for women. And there was a special place where you stood and... Um, it was, it was obviously pink in color. There was a little flower there and it's a ladies only. So women had their space and women were given their space and they were, I was actually quite surprised. And then we saw some of the carriages with, with uh, men in it and that was full. But the ones with the women, there was enough space. There was a special recognition given to them. And that actually got me thinking that, you know what? India is changing and India is really Becoming a country that is so free and so dignity, and that is exciting uh, for me. Um, one of the other things that we did was we also went to the markets and we saw a lot of fruit, uh, quite large fruit. That we were told that the farmers actually bring that to the markets, and the the, the markets don't close at night. It's actually where it is bustling at night. We also met um, Minister Prabhu, who is uh, at the offices of the Observer Research Foundation. And uh, Minister Prabhu actually sat with us, spoke to us, granted us interviews, very welcoming, um, uh, very um, um, uh, dignified as well, because he, he went through all of the, the, I mean, he was quite busy and he actually gave us his time. And we went through all of the things that we needed to know about India and about the gardens and about the government's uh, plans. And it was very, very exciting. Cherry on the top. Oh, I, and, and I, must, I must actually tell you this. This touched my heart in so many ways. It was Akshar Dham. Akshar Dham is the, um, uh, created uh, by... Um, the uh, uh, um, it was New Delhi that we went to, and oh, the the architectural brilliance of Akshar Dam just got to us, because as we went to the main temple, the main section, we noticed that there were no um, you know pillars or poles actually holding up the roof. It was all created with stone, and it was interlocking. So the entire dome, the top, was interlocked, and. The architectural brilliance was amazing. The sense of peace that you got when you went to Akshar Dham, even though there were a lot of people around us, there was a sense of peace, a sense of quietness, um, a sense of um, uh, some sort of closeness to God. And for me, um, I love elephants. So I was looking at all the elephants that were constructed by hand. Eh? And it was actually brilliant. You could see you know, the little features on the trunks, the, the elephants, and the beauty of it all was just amazing. We even went to the gardens and uh, we walked around there. The sense of peace, um, 
it, it was just something that is so different because outside the fences of Akshardham, there was this um, bustling city of New Delhi. It was busy, you know, but as soon as you walked through those gates and you entered, you were just given a sense of peace. And that for me is what India, you know, that was the highlight of my trip to India. It's not only the Taj Mahal that you have to go to visit. I would recommend anybody who goes to India, you must at least take a step into Akshatam. Um, it's just architectural beauty, a, a sense of belonging. And by the way, I'm, I'm Muslim. And the sense of peace that I actually felt when I entered Akshatam is just amazing. It's one of the key highlights, I would say, of this entire trip. And then, of course, we had to leave, um, which made me very sad because um, I actually missed uh, a lot of the food. And this is the main uh, photograph that we took. After I'm going to show you this one. Here we are, all of us. And um, when I came back, I came back with a, a, a love for Pani Puri. <laughs> so <laughs> I keep making my own Pani Puri. And we actually have a lovely place here in Durban that makes Pani Puri. And, but it's just not the same. It's just not the same. Um, I also found that I love Kandvi, which is uh, like a gram doll based uh, little roll with they put uh, pomegranates in it and they grate uh, carrots and things like that with coconut. And uh, that actually is something that we get at a little store here in Durban. And uh, that's the only store that I know that makes it. It's called Little Gujarat. Um, the amazing thing was the attention to detail of the uh, Indian population. When we arrived and when Pre President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa was there and he was the guest of honor at the uh, celebrations, quickly, these kinds of projects were put up where uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi was welcoming uh, our head of state and uh, it, was just, it was just amazing. The streets were awash with the colors of India, the beauty, the, 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 the orange, the white, and the green was all over. And women actually wore saris uh, that had the colors of the flag. And that was beautiful to me because the kind of, um, the kind of um, um, love for your country, patriotism, that is what actually got me. And, you know, I would, in a heartbeat, I would actually go back to India anytime and um, anytime just to celebrate our legacy and to celebrate the love that I have for India. That's that's my that's my bitch history. Indeed, Salmaji, thank you so, so much for sharing that very exquisite uh, journey to India with us and uh, taking us through all of your uh, experiences and sighting. I'm sure indeed it was something that's going to be uh, sketched into the depths of your heart. We've come to the conclusion of uh, today's episode of Bharat Ek Anubhuti. I would like to now introduce Mr. Sipiwe Mchunu from the Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center at the Consulate General of India in Durban to render this evening's vote of thanks. Namaskar. Greetings to all of you. On behalf of Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center, at the Consulate General of India in Durban, I am so delighted today to deliver a vote of thanks on today's episode nine of the program, India a Feeling. This is an online travel doc series. Allow me to thank our online guest who participated on today's program. Our first online guest was Mr. Mac Lunji. He is an educator from South Africa. And our second online guest was Ms. Saran Patel, an executive producer of Newsbreak Radio Current Affairs on Lotus FM SABC in Devon. To both of them, thank you very much for narrating the experiences that you have in India. It's such a wonderful stories. It, it is always a wonderful stories when you are listening to people who have visited India. To both of them, Danyamad for this story. As all of us, we know that India, in India, they treat uh, guests as 
God. And also we know how is India, they are so full of humility, uh, the humility, they respect, they are full of so many good things. So thank you very much to both of you. To the director uh, of Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center, Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Yogi, Sristi Harinarayan, Sri Piyush Kandavar, thank you very much for taking part on today's program. All our online viewers who participated on today's program, we'd like to say thank you very much for having been with us. Please visit our Facebook page so that you'll be updated about all upcoming cultural activities organized by Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center in Devon. To all of you, have a wonderful evening. Namaskar. <laughs>